Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 2 of Enter the Gungeon Tips and Tricks. If you haven't already, be sure to check out episode 1. Click here to go straight to it. Or you can ignore its existence entirely and then comment on that I missed something. First things first, some corrections from the last video. It appears I was using the term gun snapping incorrectly. I had read a post which referred to the technique I was describing as gun snapping, but in fact it's a technique involving switching guns to speed up reloads, similar to the holster reload tip that I mentioned. Therefore, I will rename this technique spamming the fire button really fast because sometimes it's faster than holding the button. Snapping. Also, there seems to be some controversy over whether or not my tip about the enemies not dropping currency when they hit you. Although in my test this was apparent every time, some members of the community disagree. The current consensus is that getting hit lowers your chance to get shell drops, but it's not guaranteed. The jury's still out on this one though. So now that we've buried all of my past errors, let's move on with some new, hopefully correct, tips and tricks for Enter the Gungeon. Did you know that the chests have different tiers of value? Whilst I can't determine exactly what dictates in-game which items are good versus which items are bad, <coughs> the game does seem to have a rarity system in place for its chests. Brown chests are usually not worth the key spent to open them, blue chests follow with a better loot chance, followed by green, red, black, and some flavour chests such as the glitch and rainbow. Again, early days in the game so no guarantee of a good gun out of a black chest will insta win you the game, but get excited when you see one at least, it's not often the game does something nice to you. Did you know you can be cursed? There's a hidden stat in the game known as a curse. The more curse you have, the more chance you have of encountering jammed enemies. These are the guys glowing red and black. They do increased damage, have higher HP, and can really throw a spanner in the works if one shows up unexpected. And if your curse climbs high enough, it may even spawn an unkillable enemy that will hunt you down for the rest of your run. So how do you get cursed, you ask? Easy, use cursed items. A handful of guns are cursed, but the Elder Blank is a common example. But some consumables up your curse level as well when used, such as the Spice, or praying at one of the shrines. Use these in moderation. Did you know this game has mimics? Do you know what a mimic is? If the answer is no, you're lucky. If the answer is, yes I know what goddamn mimic is, I hate those things, they scare me every time and I got killed by one more times than I care to admit, then you've played Dark Souls. The thing exists in Gungeon 2, but it's not as fatal down in the depths as it was in Dark Souls, but can catch you off guard nonetheless. Good practice is to always shoot a chest just once. There are other ways to protect from mimics, however. The rim of mimic friendship nullifies them completely, and the hunter's dog will bark at a chest if it wants to eat your face. And if you're patient enough, they will breathe. Speaking of references to other games, Enter the Gungeon is filled to the brim with them. It's always worth reading an item description for information about a new gun, as you just may learn something. Ghostbusters, Flash Gordon, Bloodborne, even Doom gets reference. So dig deep and let me know which is your favourite kind so far. Personally, mine is the light gun. That little homing duck hunt bird is pretty sweet. Been poisoned or caught fire and died without knowing what to do? I have, and I felt pretty stupid when I realised how to deal with it. Notice the box above your head? It only damages you when full, so roll out the way to stop poison building up. And basic first aid rules apply here for being on fire. Just drop and roll baby till that box fills no more. Ever been robbed in the gungeon? Leaving behind ammo drops or other consumables may seem like a tactical decision, but sometimes when you come back it's been pinched by someone known as the resourceful rat. It's a risk leaving things behind, although it's rumoured you can catch him in the act and scare him off for the rest of your run. Holding a charge in your weapon but run out of targets? Just switching weapons will save the ammunition. Easy tip, but useful to know. And finally, did you know that holding down Y to select weapons will actually slow down the game? Gives you some time to decide which kind of weapon you want to use to take on a boss or a difficult room. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and please like, comment or even subscribe to see more. Don't forget to tell me your favourite reference gun or item and once again thank you to the community at r slash enter the gungeon for sharing these tips. Ciao!